Welcome to this episode of Drink Forex, where we bring you interesting conversations with industry professionals. Today on the show, we have Blake Morrow, who is the co-founder of Forex Analytics and more probably popular known Twitter handle, Pipsar. Uh, so welcome to the show, Blake. It's, uh, it's great to have you on. Thank you very much, Trent. How you doing? I'm doing great. So you're, uh, you're joining us from Arizona, is that right? I am. I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona, where it's nice and toasty right now. <laughs> So <laughs> similar to here in Florida, although probably we, we, yeah. did, we did just have some biblical rains. It, every street was flooded. I, I guess all of Miami was flooded. People were in their rowboats going down the street. I would have uh, I would have actually enjoyed to see that. And actually, <laughs> I would have enjoyed some of it if we. But yeah, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, which is um, uh, my hometown. And um, and, and I moved back here, actually. I want to say about six years ago, uh, because my kids were getting to that point where, if I didn't um, move them back with the family, then they were gonna, they were gonna get into those ages where they started making some lifelong friends, and I couldn't from those at that point. But uh, but you know, with the internet today, and and with uh, the flexibility of being able to do what we do globally, pretty much anywhere, uh, it was um, it was time for time for me to move and 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 head home. So it's nice to be here. Right, that's good. Um, yeah, definitely. I don't. Well, I don't have kids. I could see how that impacts your decision on where you're going to live. Um, it's, I, I moved frequently as a child and went to four different grade schools before we finally settled into the the house we moved uh, permanently in for high school. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, that, that does happen. I mean, it, it, it's really, it is important. I know we're, we're not on the topic of currencies, but as, as a family, uh, when you have a family, your kids are, are very important because once they're, it, you, you can obviously move them around, but you know, I, I look, I look back at my childhood and I have a lot of friends that I've known since I was four or five years old. So, and they're still friends of mine. And um, I didn't want to take my kids, take that away from my kids, trying to rip them away. Okay. Most important. So when you could be around a, a concentration of them, um, there's nothing like us having, for example, having family dinners with 20 people at our house, <laughs> which happens <laughs> uh, happens more frequently than I'd like to like to have, but it does happen. As, as long as they don't move in with you. Yeah, that's yeah, I, I've I've avoided that thus far. So thanks. <laughs> um, so moving, I guess, on to current events. What was your take on the election results last night? We had the uh, the the snap vote out of Great Britain. Well, you know, it was a, it's interesting because what everybody viewed um, would be more of a, a negative pound event, which it, which it was, the, the pound came under some, some heavy pressure. Fortunately, I was positioned short the pound. Uh, so I managed to take advantage of that. And, and, and I got out at a very good price. It was during the brokerage firm rollovers when when um, you have limited connect and uh, I use JP Morgan so their aggregate uh, feed allowed me it's kind of like using an ECN allowed me to get out um, and it was a relatively small position but still it was impactful um, the, the 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 interesting thing though is we've seen the pound somewhat stabilize and and what everybody thought would be maybe another three four cent um, decline in the cable ended up not being that way because uh, the the argument now is at this point that, that we're going to get more of a soft Brexit versus a hard Brexit. So I can see the argument, but I still don't think it's going to be an easy road ahead for the, uh, the British government, um, any which way you slice it. So uh, if the pound... Uh, so happens to get a little bit of a bounce, maybe back towards 130. I think that's probably going to offer a good place for 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 traders like myself to to establish new short positions. I, I kind of don't want to do anything with it at this point, and uh, and I've actually been um, uh, without uh, pound exposure since yesterday evening. Like maybe towards the um, BST, it was probably around 2 a.m. BST. Which for me was was about six seven o'clock at night. Okay. Uh, I, I, I that was like I reduced my last exposure there. I was scalping around a little bit and made made a little bit of money, but um, but yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I I, I think the the, the pound uh, in particular is probably going to be weak for a while, and um, and so bounces are probably going to give us opportunities to short it, and that's the way I'm looking at it now. 
That's that's interesting. Um, one of the things we picked or I picked up on right there was you held a position going into the news event. Is that yes. normal for you to do? I know a lot of people say you should get flat before any major news event like that. It will actually I don't mind usually, but this one in particular, it was it was a planned trade. I I'd, um, it, for those of you that or those that don't, I, I forex analytics. I had it pretty well mapped out. I was looking for the the euro pound to come down uh, off of its highs. It was trading around, uh, I don't know, it was uh, 80, let me let me just take a real quick look. It was at 80, uh, 87, like 30. It dropped back down to like 86.50. And I was expecting a little bit bigger of a dip to 86.20 to, to establish a little bit bigger position. And it this election was just be before the ECB, or just after the ECB, excuse me. So the ECB rate decision, I did expect some euro weakness. We got some euro weakness, not a ton, but we got a little bit, which allowed me to pick up a little euro pound at a pretty decent price. Ironically, I, I wasn't that po I wasn't that positive going in into meaning I wasn't that profitable going into the UK elections, but when I looked at all the different situations. I was thinking, okay, the, the, the worst case scenario, which we ended up getting the worst case scenario, um, I, I actually thought might actually be pound positive. I'm like, everything else would be pound negative. But, but the, 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 the thing is, is, I thought that if we got any type of pound uh, rally with any other result, I thought it was just going to come right back. So in other words, the euro pound, what I felt was... was uh, manageable downside, which I had my stops, I don't know, about 70 or 80 pips away from the market, I thought was a very manageable risk going into this because I'm like, okay, well, everything that I'm, I, I have in front of me suggests that any type of pound strength we're going to see is going to be met with weakness because it, it, let's say Theresa May would have maintained a majority uh, with her party, the pound may have strengthened like a knee-jerk reaction and then and I would have just looked to sell it because I knew it was going to be a hard Brexit. Um, uh, ironically, the position that I was in was long euro pound. It, uh, it, 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 the pound sold off initially, as you would expect, but I sold into that strength, and 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 and, and that means I exited into that uh, into that weakness of the cable, and um, it really hasn't recovered since. Well, I mean, it's not too far away. Actually, it's not too far away from where I where I sold it, but. Um, uh, it, it's, if it's an interest rate decision where I'm very unsure of the decision, um, I'll take a position off the market. Employment reports are notoriously, you know, very risky, uh, <laughs> not knowing which way the BLS is going to go, especially with U.S. jobs reports. So I tend to yes, take certainly. positions off. Yeah. Um, with the U.K. election, based on my analysis and the way I was looking at it, I was thinking, well, isn't the, the downside was fairly limited now obviously i could have been stopped out it could have been a lot worse and it could have worked against me um but big events it just depends it depends where we're at technically i it, and 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 uh, to 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 draw it with my fingers without having the charts or trying to point at a chart i was basically just you know the euro pound had been rallying look for a little dip which we got the dip and then i was looking to buy it anyway so so it just happened work out knowing that if I bought it here the stop was you know below for me it was below 86 pence um, I, I you know I, I think the, the risk was manageable but it is you know it's a lot of people are risk adverse it, and it also depends on where you're at for the month or the quarter or however you're managing you know if I've had a great run I might be more apt to take on a little bit more risk if that makes sense and and if I if I've been getting beat up in the markets which it happens to me and it happens to everybody out there so if you're out right. there listening saying oh oh i never lose money yet I, I don't believe you first of all and b whenever you start feeling that way you're probably probably about ready to lose money so um you know if you're in you know kind of in a cold streak and you're you know things aren't really matching up for you in the markets at that at that point in time i you know i might not take on that type of risk so it just really depends it's more situational dependent Right. So if you're if you're having a good month, you're essentially just playing with the house's chips or the house's money, if you will, and you're you know you sure. take more risk if it's not your money. 
Right, right, exactly, exactly. Interesting. Yeah, that's because uh, I, I always hear, and I, I personally do it myself, is I, I get flat before every major news event. If any news that's coming out that I think is going to impact the market, I do not hold a position in. So it's interesting to hear a professional trader like yourself that actually does in certain situations. Well, you know, it's one of those, it, it is, it's, it is a, like I said, dependent and it's also you know where I'm at for the month or the quarter and for me I, I benchmark everything by month and by quarter so you know if I'm having a you know decent month I might might step into it a little bit and, and if I'm not and I, I'm, I, I t tend to be a little risk averse then then I'll, I'll shy away from those types of things this is a this was a very interesting situation though and it, it was something that um, I knew going into this week was the big big event of the week as we all we, we all were talking about super thursday this 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 week and when you say we were talking about it i know i, I see the shirt the forex analytics are, are you referencing the forex analytics crew and, and yeah. team? the team um people i chat with the traders i chat with yeah we you know it's super thursday was uh, was this thursday and and even all the bank analysis that we'd read you know everybody called it super thursday because we knew that going into thursday it was going to be kind of you know kind of uh, wishy -washy. right um can you actually go into a yeah. little bit of forex analytics and what it is i i know you originally you're at wise trade and now you have forex analytics that you co-founded yeah, well, Forex Analytics, um, and thanks for asking. I can plug Forex <laughs> Analytics now. Uh, it's a, it, it, it's, it's a, it's a tool that you know, as a trader of twenty plus years, and I, I started, I started trading in this business, starting the business in ninety five. I, I started trading in the end of ninety six. So I've, I've been doing this for over twenty years. Um, I felt that over the last twenty plus years, I've really learned not only what it takes to be a trader, but kind of what it you need to look at when you're trading. And for me, what I'm always looking for is confluence of indicators or, 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 or indicators or analysis or whatnot. To help me trade, we're always looking for some sort of edge in the market. Like what, what, what can I use and what can I see that, that other people don't see? And so I tend to look for you know, confluence of technical indicators, confluence of analysis, and then also I like to use correlations. Correlations are very, you know, um, everybody's like, oh yeah, correlations are great till they break, but I, I don't necessarily always use just straight correlations. I use divergence and convergences of correlations or positive and negative uh, uh, correlations as well. And, and I notice when they're diverging or converging onto each other. So that, that's, that's also important. But for Forex Analytics, the reason why we built it is because the, the average trader d didn't have a uh, one-stop shop, if you will, for all types of analysis. You know, you go different places looking for, oh, uh, uh, pitchfork analysis, and this guy does great Elliott wave analysis. So what we've we've done is we've combined different di different types of analysis types and put them into one program where it's easily read. Um, and and we use a you know a, a green light red light system because everybody in the world knows what red lights and green lights are because you know you dr you drive down the road. Doesn't matter if you're in Spain or you're in you know. Uh, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. If you see a green light, you're going to go. So we use that simple system just because it, it 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 it's it's always worked in the markets. You know, you use red candles and green candles, so on and so forth. So with our analysis, we have basically you know it's bullish or bearish based if it's green or red or it's yellow if it's neutral. Um, and each one of our analysts do their independent analysis and say, oh, okay, well here's the euro dollar. It's bullish based on this candlestick analysis. Fantastic. That that that's great. But the harmonic analysis on Forex Analytics might show red, meaning that uh, maybe we see a pivot and maybe a, a, a reversal coming. And and that's fine. It's okay when you have analysts that don't see eye to eye. But when you have different types of analysis that all line up, now you're putting probabilities in your favor. And that's what we look for is we're we're, we're we trade on probabilities and we're risk managers. Half the time, especially in Phoenix, Arizona, where no one's in the market, everybody's in real estate here. So people ask me, what do you do? I'm like, I'm a risk manager. Uh, that's almost as good of an answer as I'm a trader because either one of them, they don't know what the hell it really means. But um, 
but for a, a trader is a risk manager risk manager i'm managing risk i'm making sure that my you know my reward always outpaces my risk possible and then also what i'm looking for is i'm looking for you know um 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 probabilities I'm, if i have more probabilities in my favor to make this trade work out for me i'm more apt to take that position and that's the way that i look at the markets and that's way the way forex analytics looks at the markets if we have more analysis lining up and you can read it all too it all looks hey you know the 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 dollar yen looks bullish right now we go oh wow look we see it on elliott wave analysis uh harmonic analysis candlestick basic analysis macro analysis everything's pointing higher that means that the trend is probably moving higher and therefore the probabilities of me making money if i'm going long are going to be better than if i'm going short so and it's all done manual and 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 when we put together this package uh it generally speaking works for traders because they can go okay well they're all seeing bullish you know bullish or bearish activity in this particular pair now i can look myself i can look for an entry point going long or short based on 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 what they're seeing so it's it's a it's been a great tool and plus we um uh and that's why we did it and on on top of it all trent is we made a really really kick butt um uh application um me, me a delivery system for the traders and what's really cool is when we have you know you have mobile um your, your mobile apps and and what i'm going to do here really quick for you um is um we have uh we have these notifications that pop out you know when you're on the road and you see these um uh you know mobile app applications that pops in um uh notifications to you which is awesome that's always the that's that's like the best part because we're not all we're not all in front of our computer all the time i mean i like I, i'm in front of my computer quite a bit i'm sure you, you are as but some of us, you know, we have, we have we have lives, and you know, when you have a mobile app that actually can, you know, tell you, oh, this is where it's all happening, and then you can get push notifications when support resistance levels are breached or somebody pushes some sort of analysis. It's it's great to have on the road because I know for me, I have I keep my trading platforms on my screen, uh, on my on my um my my mobile phone on my my iPhone, but I can't do analysis on those little charts. But if if there's somebody that is for me and then i can click on the chart and enlarge it and see what they're seeing and then i can read what they had wrote or written uh, it, it does help my confidence quite a bit and that's what we aim to do with uh, forex analytics right that, that's great I, i've been on the app I've, I've seen it i do definitely like the red light green light type of setup where it's like all right i i'm I'm not personally, but Elliott Wave follower. I know you have an analyst on there that does Elliott Waves. Like, I'm an yes. Elliott Wave. I respect this analyst's point of view. All right. Now, without actually reading his analysis, I can tell whether he's he's going to go into this trade or not and how how sure he is of that actual trade. Yeah. And, and you know, it's I, I, I'm not a fan. I, I, I always tell people this. I'm not a fan of other people's analysis to trade off of but what i do is i do exactly what you said is i respect there there are certain all on my team i you know we put them all put them all together for a reason but <laughs> if i get um like if i get pushed some analysis on elliott waves and greg horvat ha happens to be our our, our in-house analyst he's awesome and and like he went short the pound yesterday that gave me more confidence about being long the euro pound yesterday right and he pushed that analysis yesterday morning before the uk election but i and then i read it and i go wow that makes, makes a lot of i didn't short the pound but i was already long the euro pound which gave me confidence to be short the pound dollar if, if you get what i'm saying so i like to read people's analysis and it gives me a different point of view which maybe they see something that i wasn't seeing because i'll make all my decisions based on what i see on my charts me personally but if i have somebody else that i respect they're giving me their point of view i can read it take it in and you know assess hey you know that that makes sense i wasn't even looking at that and i'm glad that because now i'm going to factor that into my risk assessment of this trade yeah if that if that if that makes any sense to you. It, it does and speaking of your analyst you have compiled a tremendous team at forex analytics can you just go into who's actually on the team and, and what analysts they actually or analysis they actually provide 
Absolutely. Well, we all we all wear different hats at different times. Like, for example, I, I sent out a harmonics analysis last night in Asian trade because I knew Nicola Duke, who does predominantly the uh, harmonic analysis. She might have been sleeping, but it was during the UK election. I didn't want to bother her in case she was, so I, I just went ahead and pushed some harmonic analysis. But she does our harmonic analysis is Nicola Duke. Uh, she's in London. Uh, Gregor Horvat, uh, he, is, he does our Elliott Wave analysis, um, and he's in Croatia. And then we have uh, Steve Volgaris and then uh, uh, Stelios Kontagoulas, who are in, in Athens the Athens area. They do basic technical analysis, candlestick analysis, macro analysis, and then myself, I do the candlestick analysis and um, and uh, and and basic analysis as well. And then I, you know, we, we all will kind of go back and forth and provide each other. We're, we're Skyping all day long and chatting with each other as a team, talking about different things all day long too, which which helps uh, us. We But we all, I, one thing that I always put option of forex analytics is be an independent thinker because they're like well you know what if i'm bullish the euro and you're bearish i'm like that's fine it, it's okay you can make money it in on either side of the market at any time I, that i truly believe i you know so it's it's okay but for the traders at home that use forex analytics it might they might see it as a conflicting signal well then you should because if you see that conflicting signal that and reason to think about what you're doing if you have analysts that are looking two different directions. Like I said, you can make the, the great thing about the markets is they do this. They go up and down, up and down, up and down. <laughs> so, you know, you can make money on the upside and the downside. And I can see, yeah, I, I, it happens to us all the time. We, uh, I'll trade uh, against one of my analysts on not necessarily on purpose. <laughs> it just happens to be he was short, I was long, and we both ended up money because we were looking at the market two different ways. And when you're in a range bound environment, that happens quite a bit. Yeah, certainly. That's uh, essentially that's what makes a market is people yeah. having differences of opinions and going the opposite direction. Right. Um, it, oh, go ahead. Oh, oh I was, I was going to say, you know, I was just thinking about it before I don't, I forget to mention him. Uh, Dale Pinkert, who happens to be our host for our, our morning webinar that we do, well, morning here in the U U.S., but our webinar that we do daily uh, called The Face, it's the Forex Analytics Community Experience uh, webinar. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't provide analysis uh, to the platform, but he, he provides analysis because uh, he's got such a great eye. He provides analysis on the webinars, and he's, a, he's, he's, our, he's our hostess with the mostest. <laughs> or host with the mostest that didn't come out right but and he may not be happy when he hears that so <laughs> no it's good so that's that's a free webinar you guys put on every day at 9 a.m eastern it, it is uh, yeah and and um we bring in all sorts of guests like uh j just this week we had adam button i think yesterday adam button with forex live uh today we had peter bachvar of the 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 Bach, or book report book var but it's the book report and he's he's also on cnbc all the time he, like you see him all. but dale brings in some great guests so traders can get different points of view not only analysts not only traders but you know trading psychologists and people that are just in the markets in general and um he brings it he tries to do an interview once a day he ends up doing like maybe like four interviews a week Okay. which is great and and it's super super cool and it's and it's free it's free for anybody who wants to listen in jumping jumping subjects a little bit so i would call you a famous analyst in the industry <laughs> like a lot of people know you they know you by your screen name pipsar which before we get too far into that side of it how did you come up with the name pipsar <laughs> it wasn't it was first of all it wasn't me um back at back at uh Back at our old company, Wise Trade. Uh, Wise Trade was, um, you know, uh, I, I was the chief currency strategist there for for since 2003, and we had a we had a CNBC type of platform delivery platform, which was awesome. It was uh, cameramen and women, uh, line producers. Uh, we I, I wore makeup every day and suits and ties, and I had a host a hostess uh, who was usually a attractive women you know that you know we <laughs> that, that helps <laughs> it does help believe it or not with the demographics who trade the markets it usually helps um so uh but but long story short is we had uh my show the morning edge 
at that time and, and, and morning webinars, live webinars on, on, on the internet for, for years too. Um, we were actually on Dish Networks at one point uh, where if you had Dish Networks on TV and you were a subscriber, you could get like channel 409 or whatever it was and you could watch us. It was all day long and it was, it was pretty cool. It was very expensive production that Wise Trade put on, but it was definitely a great experience. Anyway, during the morning edge, let's say maybe about 10 or 11 years ago, uh, you know, it was a, a one morning, and, and I'm I'm on with uh, with my host host, and she she was asking questions, and we were talking about uh, making pips. And uh, at that point in time, I said, "Hey, you know, everybody should have a pip handle." Uh, and I was talking to the viewers, and the viewers could actually call in. They could they could uh, they could call in. They could actually Skype in. People could actually video in, and. Um, and, and or they could email in their questions, and so I I asked the the, the uh, or I, I, I said to the, the to the audience I said hey everybody you know give give yourself a uh, a, a handle, and so I had Pip Steeler, Pip Car, Pip this, Pip that, Pip you know every everybody's like the Pip Meister the Pip you know, and 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 I asked you know you guys give me a name, so they actually gave me the name Pip Prez. Because uh, I was the president of the forex division, so they call me the Pip Prez, P R E Z, and I'm like, oh, that's cool, you know. But at that time, and, and you can remember back to the financial crisis. So this is pre-financial crisis. I want to say it was 2007. Remember when we established a czar to bail out the the, uh, the the auto industry here in the U.S.? Because that was just before the markets took a dump. I mean, we're talking 2007, right? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I remember I, the, all the jokes going around where they're just like, how many czars are we going to appoint? Yeah, we had, we, had, we had the car czar, right? So, uh, and I'm trying to put my finger on the exact time frame, but I think it was about 10 years ago. Anyway, so somebody said, hey, you should be the PIP czar. And, and about it and then everybody would every uh, my audience for questions because they'd ask you know hey look at the euro look at the pound look at this everybody would call me the pip czar and so that name stuck pip prez didn't stick pip czar stuck so um i thought it was kind of catchy and uh, i liked it and i'm like oh cool i'll be the pip czar king of pips you know it you know, sounds <laughs> great but uh so when i when i joined twitter which is about eight years ago put in pip czar and it just kind of stuck and that's just kind of who I am. So it just it just happened that way. It wasn't like a plan thing, and it wasn't. But it, but it's I guess it's cool. You know, everybody know everybody knows who I am now. <laughs> right. People probably as, as, know your Twitter handle more than they know your real name. Yeah, and my friends, you know, if my friends go, oh, you're on Twitter. What is Pipsar? What is that? And I don't even bother to, you know, I don't even bother to explain because it doesn't make sense to anybody else. But <laughs> those of you that now have heard the story and very few other people. So, anyway, that's how it, that's how it came to be, and it wasn't uh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a. Uh, grand master plan at all it was um it was uh, given to me it was a, I w it was a given name so kind of okay. stuck with nice. <laughs> Thank, thanks for the explanation it's always i've followed you for a number of years now on twitter and i've always been curious like how did this name come about because it's a rather unique name well th thank you that and that that's that's how it came about and uh because you know i always get asked now like what's a pip you know i get what the czar is but what is the pip and then i, I go price interest point and then <laughs> that, then their eyes start to gloss over and really doesn't make sense to anybody so <laughs> but it does to currency traders and that's what's most important that's you know so uh, everybody kind of knows my background now <laughs> <laughs> so a little tangent there but going actually into the, the question <laughs> um, <laughs> there what was so oh. there are a lot of people out there that are traders and they're sort of aspiring analysts. And you are a very successful analyst as well as a successful trader. But I, just for those viewers out there that, that may want to become an analyst one day as well as a trader, are there any points you can give them sort of like how to go from maybe just, you know, having a small website or a blog and posting daily daily charts or, or their own analysis to where you're at, where you basically you're a chief currency strategist for one of the largest productions in the industry, and now you you're a co-founder of a very popular analyst website. Sort of like how do you go from that stage of trader, slide analyst to where you're at now? 
That's a great question. And that's not, I don't think it's an easy, I don't think there's an easy answer. I have have to admit that I was pretty lucky in um, being associated with a company that was on the forefront of currency trading here in the U.S. Because if you don't, if you didn't know, currency trading wasn't available to the retail investor until 2002. And so, because of regulations. And so, in 2003 is when WiseTrade launched their... Um, their uh, their their currency platform and 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 Wise Trade had a big, big megaphone at the time. My name was blasted out everywhere, and so everybody knew who I was because of that. And so, like I said, I, I kind of was in the right place at right at the right time. Um, if and so because because of that, it's allowed me to really blossom uh, with my trading and 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 kind of go off on my own to. to trade independently, but on bigger size and, uh, and to start Forex analytics. Uh, for most people, I think the best thing to do is be associated with a company that has a big, big microphone or a megaphone, if you will. And, and, um, you know, if you're associated with like one of the, a, a premier company, whether it's JP Morgan or, you know, or, or Goldman Sachs or, 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 you know, um, you know, maybe some Forex brokerage firm, you see like the guys over that are at daily FX that used to be with FXCM, you know, FXCM, you know, was, was, and, uh, it isn't anymore because they're not allowed to be, but was one of the biggest Forex brokers in the United States. And so that really gave those analysts a platform to get really well known. And so I think for for anybody out there that's looking to do that, you want to be associated with probably the next greatest thing in the currency market that might be really well known and get right. Yeah, that one right there. Just kidding. Um, that that would uh, that would you know give you some sort of microphone in the market. So that 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 and or megaphone if you will. And and I think that's that's how you do it. It's. And it's tough to do it on your own, and, and especially as an independent trader, because most independent traders are starting with, with, with a small account, and you're just trying to post different things. And um, I, and one of the other, I guess, avenues that you could take is um, being on Twitter, you know, or being on like uh, uh, Trading View, where where you have um, a big group of people that you can listen or that can that can see you, and always post good content. You know, and, and try not to be critical of other people. I I, I, I tend to go out of my way, try not to, not to, um, you know, take down anybody else's analysis because it's the way that they see things, and it may not be the way that I see things, but it's the way you know, uh, it, it, but it's the way that they see things, and and try to try to have a mutual respect for the other person in the marketplace. Right. And it goes back to your point about differences of opinions where you both might be right. You're just seeing it from two different angles. Right. Exactly. And, and that's, and, 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 and so, but, but I see what a lot of people do is they're on social media, um, especially like Twitter and they, they feel, Oh, you know, I'm, I'm on Twitter and I can just voice my opinion and I, you know, screw the other guy or gal out there. And, 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 you know, you play dirty like that. Everybody sees it. Internet and trolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the trolls are the the trolls are the worst. But and and I just ignore them. I just block them. You know, because I obviously have my fair share. And, and as you be, as you get more popularity, you will. But the fact of the matter is, is um, people see that, so they see your interactions. So, you know, it's like, look, you know, if if somebody sees the market one way, and you respect what they do, that's great. And, and 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 if you don't, then just move along. And and but I think if you're posting good content, thoughtful content, not just you know, not just cra like forward thinking stuff. That that's like I like to post post charts before it happens, not after it happens. And then you know, obviously, if if I'm wrong, I admit that I'm wrong. You know, like oh, that didn't work out, or you know, a oh, boy, I wasn't looking at that incorrectly. But I, but I don't post as much as I used to, but I still do. I, I try to post some good content like once or twice a day, you know? Yeah, which is still a lot of content to be posted on Twitter. Yeah, I, might, I mean... I post something about once a month. Yeah, I, I mean, I try to. And then some days I'm a little bit more, you know, 
rambunctious than other days, I guess maybe because I have more time. But I'm 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 so focused on what's happening in the markets, right? Like right now, where the Nasdaq's completely coming unglued and the S and P has fallen a little bit. Um, but uh, but you know, I I um I I I try to just my my Twitter, I try to run it just really cleanly, you know, as far as, you know, and I have opinions too, and I, de there's definitely people out there on the internet. I could be happy if they weren't, but you know, I, I just, I just let it be, you know, and I, I just try to post good quality charts and, and hopefully gives people something to really think about in the marketplace. And that's, that's my goal. And I think if you do that, um, you'll gain a following. You really will. Yeah, I think that's actually really good advice for people aspiring to be analysts. Just don't slam on somebody else's analysis just because you disagree with it because it's eventually people are just going to be turned off more than than what they're actually going to be attracted towards you. Maybe initially people, you know, you might get some attention, but at the end of the day, people are like, ah, screw this asshole like, right. and tune out. You want me, what, what, want me to give you the, the what, I, what I think is the holy grail of uh, social media? Yes, I do. Uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> of course. I, you want to hear this? Okay, and I, and I don't I don't I don't say this because I just watch people like you know dig their own grave on social media. I don't toot my own horn. I know when I'm right, and everybody that sees what I post, they know when I'm right. But I don't go back and say I told you so. You know why? Because no one likes to hear I told you so. Because, <laughs> well, think about that That's from true. a psych psychological yeah. standpoint. A, I missed it and I didn't see it, so now I just feel bad. And B, you're being a jerk. You know what I mean? Right. So, I mean, that, think about being a, like a little kid. So, if you want the holy grail of like social media, don't, don't pat yourself on the back. Now, I have people right. pat me on the back and it's, it's really nice. They're like, oh, hey, great call. And I'll say thank you. And every once in a blue moon, I might retweet something that they say, but usually I don't because, you know, I, people, people, if you follow me, you know, I post quality stuff and they don't need to hear it. You know, they don't, they don't need to hear, oh, you know, oh, I did such a great job on that or, oh, you know, they, and I'm telling you that that I, I watch people break themselves because of that on social media. So now you got the holy grail <laughs> of uh, being an analyst on 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 social media. Don't yeah. toot your own horn. <laughs> <laughs> and put out good stuff. I've never said that in a public forum. <laughs> Ever. Ever. You, this is the first time here, Trent. So that's hopefully good it helps. Hopefully it helps some people. Yeah, that's uh, that's what Drink Forex is all about. It's a free information to help traders and people that are aspiring to be other industry professionals. I would say whether it's an analyst, an educator, um, if they want to be a broker, just whatever it may be in the industry, it's just free information, free resources. Yeah, and that's and it's awesome that you do this, Trent, because um, the you know when I started out in the business, I always like to tell people, you know, I started. As the internet was in its infancy, I mean, I remember when I went in '95, trying to jump on the internet to look for analysis. There were like, I, I'm exaggerating. There were like 500 web pages. <laughs> like I, uh, like you, you know, oh, this is no one taught me how. To, there wasn't a, anything that taught me how to do things, and and I had to figure a lot of it out on my own. And um, and and so for. For traders, I know it's it's uh, it, this type of information is great, and hopefully it gives you a step up or a leg up, and um, and and allows you to get further. And that's that's um, you know as, as as far as I'm concerned, there's plenty to go around. So you know if it if it helps you, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's that's good to know. That's uh, I, I can sort of remember when Google first came about, where yeah, if you did a search, there was what 50 pages that it would return. Right, and now right. it's like a billion in yeah. under a second. And it's nuts. I know yeah. it's nuts. It's just going to keep growing. <laughs> and it will. As scary as it sounds, it will. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I appreciate you coming on the show. Is there anything you'd like to say to the audience while you have the while you have the microphone? I'd like to say, like, to be uh, to be a. Um, You'd ask, you know, how do I become a good analyst, and you know, how do I, how do you know, how to, how to break into the industry? Um, one of the one of the best things that I've found that you can do is you can't substitute screen time. 
Uh, I, I spend probably an abnormal amount of time in front of the computer or a screen, and I, and it's probably not good for me in the long run. Um, but at the same time, there's really no other substitute than getting in it. It's not a nothing that we do in the markets is a get rich quick anything, and that's one thing that I've learned over the last. 20 some years is you 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 really have to work hard and it's a hard business um, but it's a very rewarding business and I think one of the most rewarding things about the markets is it it's always changing it's never dull um, I mean there are dull periods in, in the summertime you you might have a dull sleep at your computer because the market's just not moving but generally speaking it's a, it's a fairly, you know, it's, it, everything's moving and things are changing and you're always learning and um, it's a great business. And, uh, but, but really screen time, um, it matters. And especially when, you, when you're looking at charts in particular, it matters, so. Yeah, that's, I couldn't agree more. Uh, hopefully your eyes are okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's why they got the, these trust glasses these I don't actually wear glasses but I wear these when I'm staring at a computer because when you're looking at all these monitors throughout the course of the day it, it, it helps with your eyesight believe it or not your blood vessels don't break when you're uh, when you're just staring at them so I can see that I, I pump the eye drops personally I have a, a bottle that sits next to my desk I just sit there and constantly put them in and then I uh, I readjust my screen settings so I'm telling I'm telling you Trent get some of these uh, the, these glasses this is Company called Felix Gray, but they you can go on Amazon, and you, you get kinds that uh, that cut down the UVs, and uh, they have slight magnification. And it I, I really can't even stare at my screens now without wearing those glasses. So, and like I said, I don't wear glasses. So that's the best piece of trading advice you can give is that sure is you don't get glasses. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> that is, that is maybe it. And always watch that's how you and always successful. And, and always watch your risk when you're trading. Always watch your risk. That's the number one rule of trading. Nice. All right. Well, we'll leave it with that then. Glasses and risk, the two most important things. Thank you, Trent. All right.